we are visiting with Dr. Yasmin Davids for her Women's Negotiation Institute. And Dr. Yasmin, um, tell us a little bit more about the Institute and what you guys have been doing within these past three days. Well, I have a group of women that we're empowering and teaching them negotiation skills. They're about um, seven to ten years now, and I saw that women were not applying the skills that mainstream negotiation was teaching them. So I developed these new strategies for women that weren't as cutthroat, as they say, um, in order for women to be able to apply them to the real world situations. And I tried them out with different women and they loved them and I realized that we are so integrated as women, it's not just the skills of negotiation, we have to really address the confidence level to apply these skills. So this is an all-encompassing program that covers all of the different issues of women having to do with empowerment all the way to negotiation skills. Yeah, and um, I know you're an expert, you're a negotiation consultant all over Latin America and the U.S. for a Fortune 500 companies. Um, with the, these group of women that have graduated from the Institute, what do you see are the predominant cultural barriers that are keeping them from really getting into the negotiation corporate room and, you know? I would say the core issue is the assumption that they have that they cannot question uh, issues. They have questions they don't want to sound dumb or they don't want to sound like they're going to be about, like we're supposed to know everything. Therefore, they stay quiet, they don't ask questions, and they go off assumptions that are most of the time untrue. And it hurts them because their lack of ability, it's not even that they lack the ability, it's the confidence to ask questions. It's, I teach them, you ask questions, if you don't understand, then you ask all the questions. If you sound dumb, then so be it. You, it they don't sound dumb, but it's their own perception of how they think they're going to sound because they don't want people to judge them. We're so, we fear, especially Latinas, to be judged because we're taught all our lives you know, like get it on. What are they going to say about us? So make sure that you always give the best image. And it really hurts us because we don't allow ourselves to grow without asking questions. Thank you. And I know you've graduated over 100 members within the past three months. Tell us a little bit more about the initiatives you have with um, business entities and political entities in Southern California. Um, right now, I have a partnership with the California Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, where our Latina initiative is to graduate a thousand Latinas with the Women's Institute of Negotiation. And we have gotten funding from different sponsors to do so. And the goal is to do a pre-assessment of their skills, put them through the program, and then a post-assessment to see how they have improved in their neg negotiation skills and confidence level. And this is mostly for Latina entrepreneurs, business owners. And then I have other programs that I'm in negotiations with right now, uh, funding Latinas um, to go through the process of the program also. So there's a lot of things, and within 90 days, a lot of things in the works, but already starting the initiative with the California Hispanic Chamber of Commerce and the National Latina Business Women Association. Great. And um, I know you have two books. Um, your three. Three books. And tell us a little bit more about, about the books and what, what the... What the underlying overarching theme is? Um, the first two books the underlying overarching theme is the empowerment of Latinas. Um, about understanding our cultural barriers and being very proud of being Latinas and loving who we are, but understanding there's certain things that hold us back and breaking through, breaking free. Um, they're called Empowering Latinas, Breaking Boundaries, Green Lives, and Latina Seven Principles of Personal Freedom. My third book is called Take Back Your Power, and that is for all women. It crossed over to Main Street, and it basically teaches women that we give our power away every time we don't speak up for ourselves, every time we don't ask the questions about certain things, every time we allow someone to disrespect us or to even put us down and we stay quiet, that's giving our power away. And when we get to a point in our life that we realize that why do we feel so powerless? No one takes our power away, we give it away. So it's time to be clean. And, well, that was a lot of... <laughs> you empowered me through that one. <laughs> um, tell me more about... You know, there's a lot of successful Latinas now, a lot of, um, within the Hispanic community, Latina females are um, outnumber Latino males um, in entrepreneurship. Tell me more about this Latina phenomenon, like, I'm too powerful that maybe uh, the men can be intimidated by that within the Latino community. You know, I always tell men that as difficult as women have it, I think Latino male have, men have it more difficult than us because no one's teaching them how to deal with strong, powerful Latinas. You know, the Latino women have me at least. I can teach them how to deal with certain issues. 
about, you know, moving up, but no one's teaching the men how to deal with this. And we're not easy to deal with. I mean, we're beautiful, lovable, but we also want to succeed. And so I think that Latino men, what they tend to do is if they feel that they can't make us happy, they'd rather not even try. And we have high expectations as powerful Latinas because we work so hard to where we're at. We expect men to love us the way we want to be loved, the time we want to be loved, how we want to be loved. <laughs> so it gets difficult. I really think that if there's someone or something that can help teach Latino men how to deal with this, this is a really, you know, soft thing at the end of the day. Um, we just, there's just certain areas that we need their support, you know, the Latino male support. So until somebody steps up, hopefully a male who does that for Latino men, I think it's going to continue to be difficult. I'm Martha Elizabeth Hernandez. I'm a realtor with Century 21. I've gained so much, I can't even begin to express just everything that we have learned but um, there was a lot of emotionally um, professional growth during the whole three three day um, training or program and I think one of the best things that I learned about myself as I said it's professional and personal growth um, I'm very impatient um, but nevertheless I picked up a lot a lot of tools, a lot of strategies to be a, a better negotiator or to, to be able to, um, to work with others and negotiating whatever is it that we need to do, whether it's a contract, whether it's salary, whether it's um, you know, a program, whatever is it that we need to do. When we are given the opportunity to learn about ourselves, some of the things that we learn of ourselves are the weaknesses and moving into the next level of whatever we want to be. And as I said, um, one of the things that I did learn and that I came to conclusion is that I'm a very impatient person. Nevertheless, the things that I learned in this program are excellent for I am a realtor and I negotiate contracts every day. Every day I have in my hands people's futures and people's savings so this is this is such a great program because it has so many tools so many tools that allow you to learn um, in every aspect of your life that will help you deliver the services you are already delivering to the max to the max and to just deliver the best that you can to your customer to your clients well that's that was the way for me like this the moment I feel that way, I know something's wrong in my life. The moment I, you feel jealous of somebody, something's wrong in your life. Right there. It triggers something. And so that caused me to really take a look at myself in my marriage and be divorced, which is, I mean, you are in man, don't get me wrong. It's just, you know, I wasn't happy. Um, and so I realized that every time a woman looks at another woman, oh, it's about, isn't that, it's about fear and I'm happy. That's why I'm telling you, you always need to try to break through that wall. It has nothing to do with you. It has to do with them. They're not happy with them. So, the other time was when, only one time in my life, I've been an entrepreneur since I graduated from college. Only one time in my life, I worked for somebody and I was miserable. And so, I saw some, somebody that was doing something in business and I was like, she makes something. Like, you know, and then I thought, God, what's wrong with me? I caught myself. Once again, I'm not like that. I was like, she's doing what she wants. And right now, I'm not. So I knew, okay, you know, I need to, I took the job to, you know, financially stabilize to see if I, if I could do this. And I realized I couldn't because I was not happy. My emotional well-being is connected to my health. Um, I think that I have been through a lot of tragedy in my life. Um, everything from every type of abuse, addiction, you name it, I survived it, suicidal, and sharing my story about getting rock bottom and bringing myself back up has really helped a lot of Latina women because there's no shame in it. Most of what happened to me was not my fault, therefore I'm not going to carry someone else's shame, and I am proud for what I've overcome and I'm a better person because of it. So the ability to say, don't be ashamed for things that you have no control over, you were a child when it happened to you, therefore it was not your fault, you need to stand up of who you are and say, I survived this, therefore there's nothing in the world I cannot do. Awesome. And do you have any last words for all your, the viewers out there? Um, just 
there's nothing, I really do believe there's nothing in the world someone can not do if they want bad enough. You just have to set yourself up to do it, create a strategy, and come to my course, I'm just kidding, <laughs> and, and do it. Um, I believe you can live the life of your dreams. I am, and I've created it. Great, and how do we get in contact with with your, your um, <laughs> how do we, how can people find out more about the Institute, and how to reach you? For any other business negotiations. <laughs> <laughs> um, they can go to our website at women's institute of negotiation.com or they can go to my website at yesmeedavis.com and find all the information there. Someone will always respond. Thank you so much. Thank you. Good job.